Britain's Railway. We are first to announce The oldest and one of the busiest Thank in the you. world. It's okay. Thank Just you. Slow down. Slow down. Surely this is illegal to be packed in like this. A huge network under constant pressure. Absolutely mental today. Good driver. driver. Come on, guys, look for the driver in guard. Where anything and everything starts humping it, son. Can mean delay and chaos for thousands. Backs against the wall. He's got a suicidal female on board. Train now 90 late, owing to hitting a pheasant. I've heard everything now. Filmed over a year across the nation. Wait, that one, fella. That one. There's a seat next to Banana. We go behind the scenes of an industry we all love to complain about. Do you want a hand? So at all, that's 323.50. With the railway people determined to keep Britain moving. To infinity and beyond. Into battle. Of all the routes in Britain, the West Coast Main Line is the busiest, with trains running back to back. Here they come. It stretches the length of the country, from London to Glasgow. Seal tickets, please. Thank you. Seal tickets, please. Early start for you. <laughs> with an infrastructure that's still being modernised, this is a line that's so full, just a small problem can have big ripple effects. The good old railway saying, when it goes tits up, it really does go tits up. And now, after 15 years... Well, hello, this is Richard Branson. I just wanted to do this on the train. Virgin's franchise to run the long-distance trains is up for grabs. It's literally been six years that we've been going, do you think we'll win it? Who do you think we'll win it? Not knowing has become the norm. This is a line that's under pressure. And this morning, the pinch is at Liverpool Line Street. Excuse me, fellas, I'll just wait for It's 5.20 a.m. and Virgin security manager, Owen Brunton, is starting his day. Everyone's full of hope. Early doors. In just a few hours, Liverpool will play Everton in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley. It's Owen's job to get the thousands of fans on a train by 9am if they're to make it to the match in time. Ten times more passengers than a typical Saturday morning. The trains are busy anyway. You then throw in a major sporting event. It so happens that Liverpool have drawn Everton. They've, all got, they've both got 31, 32,000. So you know, we're looking at 64,000 people roughly travelling down to Wembley. A large proportion of those are going to travel with us on the railway. Seat reservations only here. You won't get on it though, mate. You're probably looking at something nine or seven forty-eight. It's non-stop today. I mean, there's no break at all today for anyone. Busiest day of the year. Just slow it down. Just slow it down. Stop pushing through. Owen's scheduled two extra trains to ease over crowding, but with over four thousand trains on the West Coast Main Line every day, it's hard to squeeze many more onto this already jam-packed route. In an ideal world, if we could just go to a large cupboard and pull a train out that we just happen to have spare and say, right, this is full, let's pull another one out of the train sheds, yeah, it'd be lovely, but it doesn't work like that anymore. Don't let anyone come down the middle and start bunking in at the front here. Yeah. Go towards the front of the train, all right? It's exactly as usual, bloody chaos. Now just slow down, slow down. Slow down. Stephen, I can't get on. I reckon it's gonna get another 20, 25 on this. Yeah. We got quickly. Okay. Yeah, thin people only. Another 50 folks. Go, 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 go to the front of the train. Yeah, I just mind that baby there, yeah. Thirty miles down the track at Manchester Piccadilly, around 83,000 passengers pass through the station every day. Many are obliged to meet 20-year-old Chris, 
the font of all knowledge in the information pod. Hello. Can you tell me what time the 1446 gets into Blackpool, please? Oh yeah, and can I get a train to Hayton? I thought I'd go to Shrewsbury. Oh, try and keep happy, happy, happy. Hello. Hey, babe, can you tell me when the next train is to Stockport? 1343, yeah. platform 13. Yeah. Go to platform 10, yeah. up the travel ladders. Yeah. Think I've pulled, there we go. It's usually the regular questions, you know, Doncaster, Peterborough, Leeds, Stockport. Is the 43 faster than the 45? When's the next train to Sheffield? Is that not the next one? And the monotony eventually bears down on you when you go home and cry yourself to sleep. Up in Cumbria, on a line off the main route, Simon works the Bleemoor signal box, a world away from the rest of the West Coast main line. Only trains I like are ones that keep going with red lights up back, they don't give me any grief. You know, wave to the driver and that's good enough for Simon. Almost unchanged since it was first built 120 years ago, today it controls the four trains an hour that cross the Ribblehead Viaduct. It's an enjoyable job if you can stand your own company, which I can, you know, I listen to radio, whatever, and that's about it. Read. I find you get a loathing of people, to be honest. It certainly beats work stuck in an office or whatever, in the rat race. If I come by road, it's 17 miles to here. I mean, my commute is I turn left in three miles and I turn right in five, and that's it. No traffic lights, no roundabouts, no nobody, you know, and that's it. It can get a bit hectic in summer, like when you get stuck behind a couple of tractors going home, but that's about a lot like, you know, gridlock. People don't believe that somewhere like this exists in like we're in 21st century, do they? But like all this old engineering and stuff, it's, you know, it's fantastic, but it all works, you know. Nearly 300 miles away at London Euston, the FA Cup semi final has finished. A 2 1 victory to Liverpool. And now, ticket inspector Jeannie and her colleagues have just four hours to get 7,000 fans back home. Before moving from America two years ago, Virgin Revenue Inspector Jeannie was a wedding planner. Thank you. Thank you. Nightmare. I know. Go on, buddy. I dealt with a lot of brides. I'm a bit zen like when people start yelling at me because I've been yelled at by so many brides in my life. It's been scored out and it's been section 27 by our guys, all right? Excellent. Down on platform one is security manager Owen, who's banned alcohol on the Liverpool trains. Information for customers travelling on Virgin train services this evening. Please note that alcohol is not permitted on any Virgin train service. Please, alcohol the British Transport Police have been drafted in to help enforce the ban. Sorry, mate, you put that in the bin, eh? I'm not doing it. I don't care to drive train, mate. They'll try hiding places that they think we haven't seen before. It's a game. There'll be some in the pockets. The unsightly bulges is what you're looking for. Down the socks. Hey, it's just me, bum. Right. My choice. Children's rucksacks. The small child who's got an ungainly, a, a very severe lean because the rucksack's got is full of six cans of ale. Bottle of Dr Pepper. Sorry, mate. Come on. Why are you giving drink to your daughter? It's a simple question. It's a simple question. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Wait one. On you go, mate. On you go, mate. Come on. Where you go? It's 8 p.m. and down on platform four behind the police line, Jeannie and her colleagues are preparing to face the rush for the last Liverpool train. 
including fans who've been in the pub for several hours now. Yeah. Do we have Fast a large enough rested. team? It makes me a little nervous. We only we got have Sandra. Four. I feel kind of like I'm in battle and war, and yeah. I'm like, you're not coming exactly. down without me. Exactly. I'm coming for you, Emma. <laughs> OK, are you ready? Any alcohol in the bins, please? I get a funny vibe about this train. It's weird how the, the it all of a sudden changes, the, the vibe. Like, it's really happy and fine and con congenial, and now all of a sudden, We've just bought 60 pounds worth of beer, and these little letters, they don't care what they think. Excuse me, okay, what's your name? At the moment, Excuse, me. Excuse the moment me, you're, you're not listening to what I'm okay. saying. The way you people can talk to cops is shocking. You would never be able to get away with that in America. Never. You would not talk to a cop, you'd just be thrown on the ground and taken away. It's like an animal mentality. In just four hours, thousands have headed back up north. And at 8.11, the last train leaves, packed with fans and a police escort. To ease overcrowding, fans have been allowed to sit in first class. When we buy first class tickets, we expect a relatively quiet carriage, I suppose. I was really quite scared. People were dancing up and down here. And I just was really worried that someone might be sick <laughs> while I was sitting on top of my head or something. I'm arresting you for drunken disorderly behaviour on board this service to um, Liverpool Lime Street, OK? With 25 years' experience on the trains, Gary has learned a few tricks of the trade to keep fans quiet. Once you've had a beer, you do find you sleep much better once the heat is turned up just a little bit. All I need now is a light switch. Switch the lights off, turn the heat up, wake them up when we get to Liverpool. Fantastic. Monday morning at Manchester Piccadilly. Train manager Matt Pickering is preparing for his first train of the day, the 7 a.m. to London. Weekly operating notices, these are just any changes on the track speeds, or any sort of last minute line speed restrictions, engineering works. That's the most important board, because if you've, uh, you've excelled in your job and you get your name in a special coloured font, One stop to pick up at Stockport and then straight through to London Euston. It's a peak time train, so it just tends to be uh, people travelling with companies and businesses. Always uh, the last stragglers. And that's me happy with the doors closed. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to request that you now have your tickets and any relevant rail cards ready for inspection. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They go together anyway, so you're halfway there. <laughs> so all in all, that's 323.50. It's an absolute rip-off, isn't it? My business is paying. I wouldn't pay it personally. I mean, the, the trains are still regularly late, so... Is it value for money? No, it's an absolute rip-off. <laughs> it's 17450. Couldn't be purchased. Does that make it easier? Just for me. <laughs> yeah, it makes it easier for me when it's on a business account. I always prefer a credit card that ends in LTD than uh, Jones. <laughs> because you don't feel as guilty. <laughs> What did the gentleman look like? I think a red, a red top or some sort. A passenger in first class says his ticket has been stolen by someone on the train. He said, I can actually describe the person who I think has taken the, 
because he's got a specific type of ticket which was through a company warrant it's quite easy to identify because that warrant will have a reference I just screamed hugged <laughs> to your tickets please to your ticket please cheers that's great thank you okay do you have any ID on you please sir <laughs> you don't Nothing to match the name on this ticket. Because of the rush, that's it. I just went to the hours. Right, OK. Unfortunately, I have to inform you that the gentleman in first class who's reported having his ticket stolen has these details on his ticket. Also got two passengers that witnessed you taking them. This ticket is, at the moment, stolen property, so that you've handed me. I didn't take anybody's ticket. I probably made a mistake with this. So what you're saying to me is that there is another ticket which is belonging to you. Yeah. And I you've have picked a up an incorrect ticket. That should be it. Probably. So I'll leave you to find me the correct ticket then. Sure. All right. I'll be back with you in ten minutes. Hi right there. Sorry to wait you. The passenger eventually produces another ticket, but it's only valid with a young person's rail card. Have you got a young person's card as well? Oh, I don't have my rail card. I don't think this is his ticket. <laughs> I really don't. You just know when you're being had over. And you, I don't take it too personally, you know what I mean? I'm not going to try and restrain him with garden ties and throw him in the luggage rack till we get to somewhere where I can, I can get the uh, armed police to him. But it is unfair, especially on these trains, on a peak time train, because people have fought out a lot of money. Matt can't prove the man really did steal the first class ticket. And he's reluctant to delay the train by waiting for the British Transport Police. But without a rail card, the man has no valid ticket. So Matt can ask him to leave. What you need to do is get off at crew. And that is doing you a favour. Butch voice, three, two, one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the train now approaching crew. Customers should change here for North Wales services and services to Liverpool Lime Street. I've met you in the middle. Many militant train managers out there. There'd probably be some train managers who would like scream at that and go, like, oh my god, what's he doing? Get him off! You know, and at the end of the day, don't sweat the small stuff, I think. So you just gotta keep a nice calm <laughs> and relaxed atmosphere, he says, wiping his brow, having to reapply the bronzer. <laughs> The railway industry says rising ticket prices means more money for improvements, including high-tech Pendolino trains designed to speed around the corners of this Victorian line and cut journey times. I call them the Ferrari of the railways. This is Mac 2, this is full speed. Train driver Ross has been driving the West Coast Main Line for the past 12 years. Some days I think, right, fuck it, I'm going to do 125 and I'm going to full brake, full speed. Then other days then I'm like, chill out, give the passengers a good ride, you know. Luckily I'm in a good mood today. Hello. Hi. Can I get anything to eat this evening? We have the chilli beef, or the goat's cheese tart, or we have the cold options. It's one o'clock in first class, and customer service manager Joe Costello is on lunch duty. Hi, honey, I'm home. Joe and her team serve several hot and cold options, along with pudding and a cheese board. There's different types of people in first class, yeah, but all of them are first class to us. <laughs> no, um, business travellers that do it all the time. You don't see any sort of reaction from, from what we offer in first class. It's at weekends and, and off-peak times, especially in school holidays when you've got leisure travellers on. You can hear people just like, oh, isn't it posh, isn't it posh? <laughs> you get crisp, the free, the free. Have a, and you know straight away, obviously you don't say anything, but you just think, oh, bless. Okay, so thanks. Well, that's your return Sorry. on that one. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry to disturb you, have you eaten? Thank you. Did you notice in, the t in, my, <laughs> in my accent something? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think I've got different voices for different... <laughs> Not that I speak to people in, like, a yarn eye in standard. <laughs> Before she joined the railways, Joe worked in a factory. Thank you. Thank 
sure you didn't know. It's given me like a second lease of life, this job, because I had my children young. I've been married 25 years. I was married at 19. I started a job like this, it was like, whoa! It was like a new wide world. I would, I've never been on a train to London before I worked on it. All I knew was trains went to Blackpool. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I didn't know they went there. I put the two ladies down because they sat together, so you want 29 instead of 30. When I first started, I wouldn't have said boo to a goose. And now look at me. I don't care who I talk, talk to, when, where. <laughs> Oops. What is wrong with you? Leaving your stuff out for me tonight. Hello. I need to set this evening. Yes? Why can you look out the window and see scenes like that and everything else? From nobody's office can you see that. Probably ours. Tonight I'm going to see Colin Shot and put me. That's all that I'm going to see. So you want one? No brew. One for yeah. one, one for all. Makes all the brew. Get it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many train managers you would see making other staff a brew. That's why I'm loved. <laughs> A few minutes to spare for tea is a luxury on the West Coast Main Line. Our day is set out to the minute. I don't book on at 1500, I book on at 1501 and give them so many minutes to, to walk to the train, to, to prep the train. I, I find I'm obsessed with time myself. The last thing I do when I go to bed at night is look at the watch. Ross's Pendolino is one of the fastest trains on the network, but travelling at 125 miles per hour means it can take the length of 15 football pitches to stop. I killed um, a magpie recently. I'm not superstitious, but I did have a bit of a, ooh, a magpie, you know? <laughs> I've run over some sheep. The mess, the smell. My other half, he killed a llama once. Southwest trains down that way. There was a there's a llama fa farm, and um, he ran a llama over. But they name llamas. They give them names. So he killed something with a name. You know, you hit a pigeon. It's a pigeon. But he killed Larry or Louise or whatever they call llamas. You know. Like, luckily, I'm not Buddhist. Trains on the West Coast Main Line are controlled by 38 signal boxes, and around half still use an old bells and levers system. Just south of Manchester, Stockport 2 signal box is one of the busiest in the country. Signaler Martin is on the morning rush hour shift. These are your levers. Um, black is normally points, and blue is a lot bar, traditionally. The red ones are your signals. The white ones are redundant now. They're for bits of railway that don't exist anymore. On this giant train set, Martin uses the Victorian levers to switch the points and signal trains into each section of the line. It's probably one of the safest systems they've got. It looks old fashioned, but it's, it's good, it works. Martin communicates with signal boxes up the line by bell. Bit sarcastic bell ringing there. You can often tell who's on at a certain signal box by the way they ring bells, believe it or not. You can tell who's in a good mood, a bad mood. So how could you tell that was a sarcastic bell? Because it was a two and a very long pause on a one. So I've obviously done something somewhere to upset him and he's just letting me know. He's all right now, he's back in a good mood again. In time, Martin's signal box will be replaced by a computerised control room. I've been in them and I've sat in them and I've, I've had a look at them and it looks artificial to me. It looks a uh, very sterile environment. This is more organic, if, if that's the right word. This, this to me is like real signalling, what's left of it anyway. This, this is proper railway. London's Euston Station, and it's the day before the Easter bank holiday. 
Passengers are waiting for the first off-peak train of the evening, with fares that can be hundreds of pounds cheaper. I can feel it though, the tension. Like I can feel them all standing up there, looking up at the board, ready to go either way. Taking off the high heels so they can run quicker to get this seat. Yeah, here they come. You can hear them coming around the corner. It's a rumbling. Thank you. Thanks. Do you hear it? If you have safari music to rush hour at Houston, people running, scrapping, grabbing a seat, not being embarrassed to like react where you'd be like, oh my gosh, if, if your mother was here, you know, that's all I want to say. If your mother was here, young man, we've got the families traveling to holidays. Thank you. We've got the commuters that travel up every day and they just keep on coming. Folks, anybody traveling to Manchester? Yes. I have the 1857 going out off of 16. This is going to be standing room only for many of you. I'm just going to run ahead and see if I can find you some seats real quick, OK? This is jam packed. Shit. It's so busy. And there's already buggies. Guys, there's already buggies in all the areas that we have buggies. If we don't have a seat reservation, we can't let you on, guys, because it's past standing room only. Tucked away in an office upstairs, staff are overseeing the exodus from Houston Control Room. Yeah, yes, please. Thanks very much. Thanks, thanks, mate. Hello, Houston. Maundy Thursday is the busiest day of the year. It's busier than Christmas, busier than New Year. It's an awful lot of trains to run, and it just takes one minor problem, and it just throws everything out. Yeah, we show him as one Tango 38, so that's um, thrown us a bit as well. It has to stay on that diagram, come what may. Thank you. Hi there. I have to stop. I have to unpack, I have to get out all my tickets and show them, rather than sitting there on a train, showing them how they go by. Thank you. Thanks very much. They're a set they have to show us their tickets, first of all. If we ask for any supporting documents, like there's a rail card discount, so if we ask for rail cards, people get grumpy about that. Hi, sir. Come on over. Come on, grab a No, come back here. Sir, please come back here. And where's your rail card? Thanks, love. Little stinker. I think when people enter the rail station, they think time ticks quicker than it does. You know what I mean? Like you come down and they're like, it's leaving. And you're like, no, you've got 10 minutes. It's all right. You will make it. Sometimes the common sense gets left at the door, unfortunately. The 1840 service to Manchester is about to leave. Is that your seat reservation? 636? Yes. I don't know why it's not on the screen. I just figured it was the Because it's 636 this morning, my love. Are you joking? See what I mean? That's 1840. We work in train time. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just a bit okay. stressed. That's okay. Don't, don't, don't be, let's, okay, we'll get it figured out. Okay. Let's talk to the train manager, okay? Bummer, huh? was wondering why the 636 wasn't showing on the board. What right, I explained okay. to her now is that we work you know on a 24-hour <laughs> clock. OK, go on, yeah, jump on this one. Yeah, OK. So, so you come at the right time, haven't you? Just, uh, just uh, 12 hours late, unfortunately. Just right, 12 okay. hours late. I mean, just <laughs> stupid. Thank you. No problem. Have a good day. No worries. Coopsie doodle. For me, it's just a ticket. For that person, they might be going home and seeing their mom for the first time in six months. They're either going home or they're going someplace where their family is or their friends are. Like, it's not mundane for them. Um, so I just try to remember that for everybody. While passengers start their bank holiday weekend, 35 miles up the track at Leighton Buzzard, railway workers start the night shift. Engineering work is necessary every night of the year to keep the West Coast Main Line in working order. You see what you're up to, yes. <laughs> see what you're doing to my railway? 
It's network rail manager Jane Simpson who has to ensure the entire line is up to scratch. There's more trains, the heavy trains, they're fast trains, they're tilting trains. It's hammered and we have less and less time to maintain the track. All works have strict deadlines and Jane risks paying heavy compensation to the train companies if they overrun. Wait, do you want to stop? But with more trains on the West Coast main line than ever before, the window for maintenance is smaller. Tonight, they have just 7 hours 20 minutes to replace a section of worn-out rail. It's like the orange underworld. It's like that funny little club where you're all glitching the way. But work can't begin until the last Houston train passes through. And the team have just heard it's running late. So we've got to cut in by... Yeah, we need, it's one. absolutely essential that we need to cut in by 10 to 1. If we don't hit that time, uh, it's dangerous to continue because it almost means a guaranteed overrun. So there's a whole critical path of activities that need to be done. So one missed T2 can it results in a whole domino effect of the uh, problems further down the line. So we've got, what, 20 minutes to sort this out now? Uh, yes, roughly, yeah. If it gets to a point where it is an hour late, we may just say, let's, we can't get the work done. Thank you. It costs us yeah. yeah. about £175,000 a shift, so if I lose a shift, um, it's very costly. At Euston, staff know that holding a train for just two extra minutes can throw the schedule for the rest of the night. Wait, hold on. Um, one more minute. Let's see your ticket. No, I just buy the tickets, so I'm late. And only 30 minutes. Please, I need to feel like the doors are all locked up, the train's about to yeah. go, need to be done. Hi, dear ma. Okay, thank you. No, no, I'm going it, the train's going, I'm going it. But I, I, I have arrived here before. This is one completely, you should be in the back until three minutes ago. Yeah, I have been here, I was talking to him, I have one minute here before. Yeah, but madam, the, door, the door's closed two minutes before the train's due to go to allow the train to leave on time. But I have a ticket, so why are you still on the ticket to that? We can sell a ticket to anyone at any time, madam. Yeah, can you refund my ticket to that? Yeah, if you go to the ticket office, and they will do it for you. They'll refund your ticket and they'll let you know what the best way to go is. Oh, coming back. You don't. You have a place to stay here in town. Do you want my help? Because I'm happy to help you, but I need you to talk to me. So you can get your discount or you can get your refund, okay? And then you have the Caledonian going out tonight. If you wanted to take that, you can sleep on the train. And then you'll get first thing in tomorrow morning, or we have a train going out tomorrow morning quite early, and you can catch that one and get in tomorrow afternoon, okay? I have two, two babies. One is two years old and one is six months. And I miss them um, and then I kind of go home tonight. But it, it's hard, I understand. I can only imagine a miserable feeling. At Leighton Buzzard, the last train passes Jane and the team just in time to make the start of the shift. It's, it's like Thunderbirds. It does look like Thunderbirds ago, isn't it? It's going to happen. It's going to be tight, but we, we should be OK. Yeah. We should be OK. Just made the 10 to 1 cut off. So that's, that's really good news that the uh, ship can go ahead tonight. That is the track relaying train. So it's picking up old sleepers and the old rail and putting in new sleepers and new rails. It'll take 40 men until dawn to replace the section of track. We have to do this manually or by conventional methods. We'd only get half, if half, of what we ever get achieved tonight. But my ten-year-old would love this. <laughs> when I bought him a little, um, the little wooden Brio train set when he was a child, he had his little um, playmobile people standing around it, and I said to Molly, "What are all those doing?" He said, "Mummy, they're working on the railway like you do." There'll be another hundred nights like this before all the worn-out rail is replaced between Northampton and London.
15 Northern service to Hadfield. And now the clock, platform four. It's morning rush hour at Manchester Piccadilly. It's a Bristol train, platform six. So it's that one just there. We'll go to the next set of stairs downstairs. Okay. As much as some people moan about being in here sometimes, I genuinely love my job and enjoy it. Which, you know, on the record, you know, I do quite like the old train. Uh, for tomorrow, where I can there to buy tickets? Ticket office. In advance. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Hello. Okay. Um, the next train to Euston. We'll be at 13.55 if you're sharpish, platform 7. Okay. It, it does irritate me. I, I wouldn't dream of asking anybody for anything and not, you know, utilising some manners at least, you know. You're seen as a uniform and you're not actually a person. Uh, next train to Darlington. To Darlington. 17.56, platform numero 3. Thank you very much. No worries, pal. Thanks for coming. See, why can't everybody just be like that? Just be, you know, chit. You know what, mate? Nice one. Thank you for doing the job you do. Everybody just wants to go home now. Nobody's quite bothered about anybody else. And, you know, you can make as many announcements as you want to say, oh, just shuffle back from the platform edge, let people get off first. No, nope, they just want to get on and go home. Not bothered. Hello. This ticket, is this all I need to get on the train? It is indeed, 1915, platform 5. 5, and which end will the first class car be on? Uh, it'll be right at the far end. The far end. Yeah, okay, okay. thank you. Do you sound like Kermit the Frog? Or just me? Let me defrag. Hello. And the next train to Wigan is going. We'll be at 20 past 8. What? You just missed one. Is there not one at what, Tim? Hello. Going to Wilmslow, please. Wilmslow? Sorry, I keep doing the burps. Uh, 19.30, platform number eight. Oh my god, isn't there no, no train before that? No, it's the next one. Sorry? That's the next sure. one, I'm, I'm oh, pretty certain, yeah. God. That's all the just one earlier. 25 what, minutes. No train or anything like that? It's only 24 minutes. Honest to God. Yeah, you just class. missed one. Okay. Okay. It's not that much of a shock, Christ. Everybody's in such a rush. You now everybody's going, oh, we've got to be there now, man, we've got to go. Like, I mean, I avoid queuing up and asking people for things now because I know what it's like to be sat here. You said there was one from Victoria at quarter two. No, not not quarter two. It's at ten past the hour. So the saying I once heard, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Well, I don't know. Get away the lot of you. <laughs> Matt is on the 1306 Birmingham service to London. Two, four, eight, one, eight. And so he'll tickets, please. As train manager, his role involves more than checking tickets. He's also responsible for the safety of all passengers and crew. And he's the first port of call when there's a problem on board. That's very heartbreaking, that one. When the brakes go on like that, you usually expect uh, the driver to bing bong you. And if it does, then. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hi, driver. Hi, Are you all right? All right, thank you. Cheers. Bye. The driver has got a dragging brake in coach G. So that might mean I have to do a rotation test, which means me going onto the track. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt, your train manager speaking. They've just spoken to the driver of the train. He's currently investigating a possible technical problem with the train at the moment. would like to apologise for the delay that's incurred today and any inconvenience this may cause. Please await further announcements. Thank you. How's that going to go down? Uh, we're only on minute two, so fine now. And then it just goes like... It's like a boiling kettle. Can you imagine I've just turned the kettle on and it's just fizzing? <laughs> As it goes towards the end of the cycle, it, it big bubbles. <laughs> I'll just pop this on anyway, or I'll well, take it with me, and then hang around the driver. Should he require me to do some exciting trackside challenge? <laughs> Hello. Okay, on my way. 
that the driver requires my assistance. And I'm, I'm thinking that it's, it's not to make him a brew. <laughs> Although you shouldn't, really, I obviously feel sorry for people that are being delayed, but I do like a bit of drama sometimes. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> Thank you. Right, basically I've got to do is a rotational test. Okay. okay. I'll watch you out, I'll shut my door. Yeah. I'll look out the window here. You've got to mark it here, you've got to mark the yeah. wheel. Make sure they're turning, both wheels if you can. Yeah. And um, once we've done that, I'll put my head back out. Which... I'll, move, I'll move about 10 yards, that's all. It's the first ever, first ever. Especially with the, okay. well, not a running line, it's blocked. Mine as well. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, the line's blocked, you're okay. Right. Just find a step there, I'll be okay. Come to come in, yeah? Uh, okay. Yeah, Where which, are, which so wheels? We yeah, please, yeah. yeah well done. From trackside, Matt can check whether the brakes are working. Why would someone move a train about 20 inches? We're going from Coventry, yeah, to capital city, yeah, and it ain't working, is it? Hi there, it's Matt, the train manager on One Bravo 46. I know, I'm enjoying it though, it's dead exciting. Today. 150 miles away at Euston, Matt's broken down train is already causing chaos. With trains scheduled so tightly together, a massive traffic jam quickly builds. And this afternoon, Matt's train isn't the only problem on the West Coast main line. There's a track circuit failure just outside the station. There's two failed trains further up the line. There's also been a point of failure. Oh, good. How long do you reckon it's going to be? Uh, so far, it's been 15 minutes to an hour. An hour? Yeah. Hotel 33 is cancelled. Uh, engine range Houston. Absolutely mental today. I came in, it was all simmering nicely, it was all calm, and then suddenly. Yeah, but you just announced that on the 14 minutes past one was going to all of the stations, there's a 54 one was delayed, but on the screen it's not so emergency, so I don't want to get on it. A brother two to all Virgin platform staff. Please advise all departing drivers not to go above Notch 3 between Euston and North. Euston back in about 10 minutes, we might have some people here. I've just got a message to run like a maniac to platform 16 for the Hemel Hempstead train. We, loads of us run down there to see the guard letting a half empty train go. And we said, what are you doing? He said, it's running late. It's a farce. Very busy. Disruptions always cause busyness. It's been uh, challenging, to say the least. Platforms are occupied, so everything's getting re-platformed. So everyone's just trying to sort of juggle it all at once. Then you've got staff phoning up, not knowing where they're supposed to go, where the drivers and TM, where the TM to be. So you've got to try and get them in the right place at the right time. So it's a pain in the... What are we looking for? I need to get straight through the new way now. It is a relatively awful service, isn't it? I do feel sorry for you. Uh, they're probably not paying you enough anyway. On Matt's train, the driver has confirmed the brakes are fine, and it was just a computer glitch. And they're finally on their way. I have got a bit of an adrenaline buzz over that, I really have. April's got a fascinator. But passengers are now over an hour late getting to London. We're going to the palace, to the teapot, to the teapot. You can't be late for the Queen, can you? Goodness me. <laughs> yeah. She won't start with that, because she's very good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you won't believe this, but this service is now arriving into London Euston. I do apologise for the severe delay to your journey. Thanks for travelling with us. Hopefully in better circumstances next time. The trains arrived, but the knock-on delays will continue for the rest of the evening. Hold-ups in one part of the country cause ripple effects that can be felt hundreds of miles away. Birmingham New Street is Britain's busiest interchange station. Today, passengers are waiting for late running trains and staff in the signal box think an incident over 100 miles away is to blame. Yep, yeah, sorry. Yep, yeah, go on. 1047, due to a fatality somewhere down Exeter. Oh, that's into the fatality. Exeter, OK. That's affected all the trains in Exeter and the trains that are now affecting us. 
but I mean Exeter, what are you looking at, 150 miles away? So uh, an incident that's happened in Exeter is now affecting us in the Birmingham area at 12 o'clock already. It's Satnam's job to find out the reason behind every single delay, not just to keep the passengers informed, but because for every minute a train is delayed, there's a fine of up to £200. And there are complex rules about whether the train company or network rail in charge of track and signalling foots the bill. It's all in monetary turn because the train operating company, if it's their fault, then they have to pay. If it's uh, network rail's fault, i.e. infrastructure problems, then we have to pay. So at the end cause is to try to save money. So who's the fatality down? Uh, at, the, at the moment, well, the fatality, that's going to be down to Network Rail. So uh, Network Rail will, will take the cost. This is the Bible, and this tells you all the reasons that uh, the trains are late. The easiest one is signal failure, which is IA. And I think everybody knows that one. Trespass, young, young children in, in uh, holiday times, Network Rail get the cost for that. Animal incursion, animal on the line. Strike. Lightning strike, yes, you can have lightning strikes. Bird strikes, uh, it all depends on the size of the bird. If the bird is bigger than a, a pheasant, obviously, then the network rail will take the cost. And if it's smaller than a pheasant, then they'll hit the train operating court companies because uh, network rail can't be accountable for flying birds. The pheasant is the benchmark. Anything that's bigger than a pheasant, then we'll take the... Uh, We'll take the hit. <laughs> yes. So you've got 12 pages. That is, well, it's been nicknamed, well, there's two names on it. It's a Dennis and Beach beating stick. So if they make him mistakes, the signalman, I've got the use of this to make sure that they do correctly. Well, Dennis is on the middle screen, but he's done pretty good today, so I haven't have to beat him today. So he's quite lucky, he's been working well today. <laughs> Some people would say it's a culture of blame. Some would say it's a culture of accountability, depending on what they're getting out of it or what they stand to lose. You, you've got like um, a table of people all trying to apportion blame to each other. And then the bottom man, me, or the driver, or the guard, or some other signaller. He gets, uh, he gets his bum kicked. I think we're, we're just uh, an e easy people to blame when something goes wrong. We're, we're all aware of that and we're all watching our backs now in a way that we never used to have to. It can be more than stress sometimes, it can be serious anxiety. I, I've lost a lot of sleep over it. Delay minutes aren't the only change Martin's noticed during his nearly 30 years on the railway. In the house as a kid, we never wore shoes and socks. My, my boss now, Dave, he, he had a long-winded campaign against me uh, not wearing shoes and socks. I think it was a health and safety issue. He started sending spies up to check up on me, like, so eventually I had to bite the bullet and uh, wear shoes and socks, as it were, as you can see. They always wear shoes and socks in the signal box. It's May Bank holiday, and the West Coast Main Line is closed. There was a train running across that a few hours ago. It sounds like Thomas the Tank. We go beep beep. It sounds like Gordon shunting in the yard. Major planned engineering works here at Hartford Junction mean no trains will run south from Manchester or Liverpool for the next two days. Can we drop any machines in here yet? I'll, say, I'll ask him how long it's Can't we start, drop, can we start dropping in there, can't we? As soon as he goes past. The only thing is, this fucking, that rail's in the way. That's, that's in the fucking way. That what, the whack is? Yeah. Working around the clock, Andy and the team have just 56 hours to overhaul the layout of this complex junction. Lads. Lads. Right. Once finished, trains will run faster over the points. Andy, how far we got to go, mate? Over. Squeezing a few extra minutes from the schedule. Just move that wackers over a bit, please. Do you want to just jump on this quick? We we'll just jump on that yeah, for us quick, duck. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Drop them there, son. Cheers, Keith Tar. Network Rail has spent months planning and giving advance warning there'd be no trains. Go ahead, keep it coming, mate. Nice and slow. I'd have to lift it a little bit more there, mate. 
to get up to get over them whackers. But despite the closures, the FA chose this weekend for the cup final at Wembley between Liverpool and Chelsea. That's it. Much to the dismay of the Liverpoolians. I don't want to talk about it, mate. You know, I couldn't get leaving. All the other lads got leaving. A couple of them have gone to Wembley. I've just spoke to me, mate, then gone to Wembley, so I'm here. I've got two phones here, so my mate's going to ring me. One of them's going to ring me and tell me how it's getting on. Come on, Liverpool's biggest fan. Here when his sides are in the cup final. Fuck off, no bad. <laughs> At Euston, it's an unusually quiet Saturday night. Not everyone has heard the West Coast main line is closed. I don't think there's any more trains for tomorrow to Manchester. What? There's no more trains to Manchester tonight. Not tonight. Liverpool fans arrive after the match expecting to catch a train home. Their team's just lost the FA Cup and now they're stranded. No trains, I'm afraid, tonight, sir. Serious? I'm serious? Yes, yes, sir. You're not serious, are you? Yeah, there's no more trains. No, I'm fucked. Yeah, there's no trains, sir. It's, it's been advertised for ages. We can't get home, yeah? So now we've got to pay mega millions of pounds to stay in London. And we've just had a lousy Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it, gets, it gets worse as the night goes on. That's all, that's all we've got to show for today. <laughs> Basically, don't care about scouters. Just go where you are, you just get on with it. We've got no more money left. We've got nowhere to stay. So it looks like I'm going to have to stay in yours. You'll have to put us up. It's Sunday morning. All clear at the back, driver, all clear at the back. And the team are halfway through the engineering work. Just that team back, driver, all clear at the back, all clear at the back. At Euston, passengers still arrive, oblivious to the limited train schedule. We're going to Warrington Bank Key. You've got a journey and a half. Oh, no. Are you talking about the first train out to uh, Hemel Hempstead yesterday? Uh, your next train to Hemel won't be until after 2 o'clock. Two Why could I buy tickets for £121 and then not get on the train? I would have flown otherwise. Bank holiday engineering work is never popular. But packed train schedules during working days mean there's no other option. Uh, Bravo 2 receiving. In theory, fewer people travel. And yes, it's a massive inconvenience to the customers that want to travel. It's one of those things, it has to be done. And it's very, very hard trying to get it done without inconveniencing somebody. And it's just trying to do it at the best possible time. There's no easy way without um, inconveniencing somebody. Hello. Hey. You look really distressed. I am massively distressed. Oh, What's the deal with the Manchester trains? Right, Manchester, you have to change at Nuneaton. You'll get there by 10 to 4. Going via Nuneaton? It's a four-hour journey. Fuck off. We can't go. We can't go. They cancelled all the trains. I can't. That's our last one. I can't. I blame the unions. How about working at night, lazy fucks? Well, people think we're lazy. We're not. We just we have a job too. We do to the best of our ability. I'm afraid. And sometimes that means holding the public up, but. What would you rather have, a train that runs properly or one over in that field? <laughs> At Hartford Junction, work is running two hours behind schedule and the team know that if they don't reopen the line on time, the delays could be so big, they'll become headline news. Are you ready to start tamping now? As soon as it's profiled, as soon as it's, yeah, backs against the wall. A lot of these guys will understand about delay minutes and what it causes and, you know, they all feel the pressure at some point. Start tamping it, it's a lift them off the fucking clips, the lift's in it, son. The clips will be fucking shown. Watch yourselves, Alex! Andy, there's only another eight hours to go out tonight. Plenty of time. In just a few hours, the 558 from Glasgow will be speeding through here on its way to London. Tonight, the Feetway Fairies will be in. They're in everything, London, with the frickling of fairy dust. But yeah, that's where we are, and hopefully we're back running at half past nine in the morning. Hopefully.
Up at Blee Moor, Simon knows it's only a matter of time before his box is also modernised and moved to a high-tech signalling centre in the city. I can't see going to relocate somewhere like that. Looking at, you know, panels and stuff, you know. It's not for me, that I don't think. There's no one about, it's great. You can go where you want without blooming people annoying you. Just in your own little world, I mean, you, say, you can't be any more of your own little world than all these idiots walking about with mobile phones with these things in their ears talking all the time or on a, it's out on a train, they're in a different planet, aren't they? You can't get any conversation out with anyone on a train or out, can you? So, to me, it's, it's a different version of that, to be honest. So, you're in your own little world, aren't you? You don't want disturbing, so that's how I look at it. I just wish it another mile or so further just to really put people off, you know, a bit further out, uh, totally inaccessible and be even better, like, but. And it suits someone just like me. It's the end of the summer, and at Euston there have been big changes for Jeannie. She's no longer checking tickets and is now working on the platforms dispatching trains. It's been a massive uh, change, but it's been a good change, making sure that bad boy gets out on time. If a train goes out late, we will have people coming knocking on our door saying, why did that go out late? Because every minute counts. So it's different. It's it's a different type of stress. So yeah, I would say promotion. I like to think of it as a promotion. But Jeannie's promotion hasn't brought as much security as she'd hoped. Virgin's franchise to run the long distance trains has expired and no one knows who'll run it next, least of all the stuff on the front line. Now it's just the unknown. So it, I suppose it's a case of Feel a little bit numb at the moment because you're not entirely sure what's happening and whether to feel ecstatic or upset or whatever. It's, it's a really strange mix, mix bag of emotion. The only certainty is they'll be handling more passengers wanting more trains on the West Coast Main Line. Whoever, whoever gets it, they're going to want us uh, driving a lot. They're going to want to pound of flesh out of us. The trains are already faster, bigger. They just want more. Change is scary, and we don't know which way it'll go. Uh, so because of that, I think there's a very nervous energy around the station right now. Time's kind of ticking away slowly, and normally in the railway it ticks by pretty fast. We always hope that the best man wins, don't we? So we'll see. Stay with us on BBC HD. Sue Perkins' new comedy is looking for a spot of team spirit, paintballing style. Heading out, coming up next.